Hello and welcome PML fans. I'm your host and head admin Joe Zamora here. And with me, I have Anthony Pollin, coach of the Savannah Sharpedos. Hey, um, again, my name is, yeah, my name is Anthony. Um, some people call me Sharpie, just some people, depending on where you know me from, will call me Sharpie or Kekleon or whatever. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. All right, nice to have you, man. And you are our last coach to fill a position. Um, what is your draft history? Um, I've only been in one other draft league. I'm currently in that one draft league now. We're getting close to the end of this, um, yeah, close to the end of the season. And I didn't, well, I'm doing a lot better this season with them than I did in my first season with them. So other than that, I, that's pretty much it with my draft history. I've watched a lot of draft videos, so I kind of understand how, you know, how it works for the most part, but I've only ever participated in that one. Oh, the TPO? Yeah. Okay. Well, certainly very interesting there. I believe you had the same logo over there. What made you choose this logo? Um, I had a different logo that I had back in season or back in TPO season two, and it was done. With, it was done for me by um, a friend of mine named Wes. He's one of the coaches there as well, and he did a lot of the team logos for the coaches in TPO. But I went with this one. I wanted something that was a little bit, that stood out a little bit more. And I kind of had a few different designs. But then um, my fiance, then Jennifer, who's also on this league, she kind of um, just threw something together. And I, I just, I loved it. And I stuck with it. And I stuck with it. And it's probably going to be my logo for a very long time. That's awesome, man. Because it, it does look cool. It looks like he's doing Aqua Jet or something. Yeah. Alrighty, man. Um, how do you feel PMO be different from the TPO? Um, I haven't really. Well, the main thing that I've noticed that is different from TPO and the PMO is I noticed that um, PMO has the use of the tiering system, which is something that I've seen, but I've never actually, you know, used myself. Mm -hmm. So the tiering system is going to be new to me. Um, the shortest season is also going to be new to me because I'm used to this. Um, I'm used to TPL season, you know, being 17 weeks on being NFL style, you know, 32 teams, 17 weeks, all of that stuff. So being in the shortest season is also going to be pretty interesting. It's going to force me to adjust. And I kind of want to try something, you know, some different play styles with this, you know, in this league that I'm not doing over there. Yeah, I feel that. It's certainly going to be a higher, higher risk, higher reward early in the season. Right. Um, who do you expect to take with your number one pick? Uh, I know you're filling in for Morgan, and he had about, I think, the tenth pick. So a little ways down, but what do you hope falls to you? Um, I'm not sure. Like, I'm, I'm really, I'm really not sure. I'm kind of hoping. Well, I actually have to. Um, look at the tier list again but I'm hoping to get something I'm not sure I'm I, like I want to focus part of me wants to focus on weather so I want to say maybe Kingdra or like Excadrill but I could also you know take with something simpler I could do like Darmanitan or something honestly I just I'm, I'm not even really sure I think I'll probably end up maybe not winging it but <laughs> I'm probably going to um, do a draft board. I'm really gonna like kind of sit down, do a draft board, see what's what I think will be available to me, and then like try to do like a top three, top four of my personal options just to see what works best, and then I'll just probably build my team around whatever I pick. Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Um, how do you feel about the tiers? I know uh, TPO doesn't really have tiers; they they pretty much free draft it all. How do you feel uh, these tiers work? Um, I like, I actually, I do like the tiering system. I, um, I've got to look, I guess, a little bit more into which Pokemon are in which tiers because I, there are some Pokemon that I've looked at that I questioned why they were in certain tiers because I didn't think, me personally, I didn't think that they were um all that great. There are some tiers, there are some Pokemon that are lower in tiers than others and then there's some Pokemon that are 
in higher tiers that have no business there. In my opinion, have no business being there. Okay. Well, what's one that you feel has no business being there? Like, off the top of your head. Like, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I saw a light noon, I believe, in tier two. Mm-hmm. And I probably wouldn't put Lanoon any higher than tier four. Okay. Because uh, it's a very it's a very niche Pokemon. It's it's kind of got, you know, maybe two different movesets. Both you know, both the Homeland Lanoon and the Galarian Lanoon really don't have a whole lot going for them. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't I can put them, you know, too high up on the ladder like that when I don't feel like they're all that useful okay well here in tml uh you only get one of the forms you don't get all the forms like you do in tpl yeah i saw that so i think the galarian one is like the tier four but i think uh the hoenn one is tier two mainly because of the belly drum set i see i thought about that but then i was like well the belly drum is only one set and it can be stopped relatively easily you can be stopped by taunts it can just be taken out on the turn it uses belly drum there's a lot of I, there's a lot of it that i just it's too like i can see if it was a, if it was a little bit bulkier i think if it was a little bit bulkier whether it be hp or, or one of his defensive stats then i would say okay yeah maybe you know this is a bigger threat but because there's more pokemon available because the um the forms are all split up i feel like it being tier two, when now you've got, let's say you've got both Darmanitan and, or Darmanitan, um, Galarian form and the regular form, and now you've got six Rotoms that's out there, all knowing will o plus, you know, the multitude of other Pokemon that are out there. I just feel like Lanoon is kind of outmatched, even with Belly Drum, you're looking at it getting burned and going straight back down on like plus three, instead of being at plus six, which is still a lot, but, that is, it makes a major difference as opposed to like it was still potentially getting walled by something. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Um. So, what is your favorite battle strategy? Um. I tend to be a late game closer type. Um. In TPL season two, it didn't really work out that well. I would always find myself like on the comeback trail. I knew I was like getting ready to come back and probably pick up a victory, but the way you know the 20 minute timer is set up is i just didn't have enough time to complete the comeback Mm -hmm. like i would always i would put myself in a position to where i know i have a win condition it just always took too long to get there and i would end up losing the battle just because i just didn't have enough time to thought the clock and but now i've kind of learned to manage that a little bit better so i tend to focus more offensively early and if I feel like things get out of hand, I'm, I'll always put myself in a position to where I can kind of find my, like, like have my win condition, or keep my win condition, like, safe. Like, if I have a Pokemon that I know, all right, if I can get this thing clean, I might be able to, you know, pull off a comeback or just pull off the win. Then okay. that's that's kind of what I go for. So I'm more, I'm a very, um, play the field, late game comeback, or just late game cleanup type of person. So basically just a very opportunistic player. Right. Alrighty. Well, is there a Pokemon in the draft that you want to get to fit your to fit your scheme? Sharpedo. Sharpedo? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was nice I to draft the mascot. I didn't get the draft. I didn't, well, I'm not going to say I didn't get to draft my mascot <clears> in TPO. <throat> I I chose not to draft. I was going to draft it, but then it got drafted right before me. And I actually had, you know, I had, I think, three or four opportunities to get it. But I wanted to build my team first, and then I was going to draft Sharpedo. But then it got taken from me. And then I, there, I tried for, I tried a few times to get it, and it didn't work. Then some people tried to give it to me, but in exchange for, like, my best Pokemon, and I just wasn't going to do that. Yeah, and, trade gouging over there. Yeah. So I just kind of let it go, and I mean, it's been working out. I've been doing all right without it. But this time, I have full plans on grabbing Sharpedo as soon as I can. Well, not as soon as I can, but soon, basically as soon as I can, just not like early on. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Well, all right. Um, there is um, 
you will be battling your fiance this season because you are in the same division. But other yeah. than her, uh, is there someone you're excited to battle in PML? Um, <laughs> I haven't seen. Actually, um, I need you to send me the the I guess the list, the link, or the schedule because I'm not 100% fully sure everybody that I'm facing. But I know that. If I do, I kind of want to face some of the other guys. I really just want to battle everybody. I like battling new people. I like, I want to battle um, Matthew again. I know he's in the other um, the other division, but I do want I do want to battle him just because I would I consider him my biggest rival. I do consider my fiance a, a good rival too, just because. Um, Really, just because she's grown a lot since she started battling, and I feel like me battling her is a good, you know, a good benchmark. So just just to see how much progress she's made. I'm not gonna like counterpick her in a draft or anything like that. But I just I like I haven't really been able to like battle her except for when she like practices. So in an actual like real scenario battle, I really kind of want to see how well she does. I want to see how well I do against her. Yeah. Okay. Well, certainly this season is going to be very exciting. Anything you want else to say to the fans before we go? Um, oh, well, I hope that we can, that I can provide y'all with some, some good content, some good matches. Um, good luck to all the coaches out there this season. And hopefully we can do pretty well. All righty, man. Well, thank you for your time, and we'll talk to you again after the draft. Thank you.